Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe, and you're checking out Weekend at Gabe's, and thanks for checking out this latest episode. While you're here, also follow us on these social medias at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. Thanks for checking us out. You are checking out the hottest internet TV show on these internets and on the planet, so go tell a friend if you haven't already. It is a pleasure to introduce our first guest of the night, Ronnie Rage. He got his name... He got his name by being blackout drunk and writing it on his shoes, so there's no better way to introduce him into the show than with that. (laughs) (laughs) Why is he on there with you, man? Why is he on there? Hey, the fact that he knows that, bro. (laughs) (laughs) We we do do our research on this show. Tell a friend. Um, But uh, welcome to the show, man. We appreciate you giving us your time. Man, I appreciate you, bro. This is lit. I've been dying laughing over here. (laughs) <laughs> so you uh you have the new uh single and new video out maze runner which is com- completely uh appropriate because now we're in october so we have the cornfields so you yeah. totally missed an opportunity to use the cornfields as your backdrop as your maze runner <laughs> we- weekend <laughs> you could have you did your whole all your own like weekend super bowl version of you just running through the the maze field like the <laughs> <laughs> Jeepers Creepers ass thing. Yeah. 30,000 other people who look just like Ronnie Rage. You know, it would have been a spectacle, man. We could have made that happen. <laughs> Missed opportunity. But nonetheless, the, the new single is out there. The new video is out there. It's phenomenal. It's great. Uh, talk a little bit about um, the, the premise and the meaning behind that. Um, the, the, the video and the song. Um, yeah. I mean, shit. Low key, I was going through like a, a weird breakup um, when I wrote that. And I actually wrote it like while we were still kind of together. So I mean, it was like future me talking to current me, like, yeah, you gotta get out of this shit. Like you, you gotta end it, you know. Um, and then the video, I don't know, like I always wanted to have a video with just like nature, like nothing, no other people, no props, no nothing, mm. just like me and nature and like with a nice outfit on. And we we made that happen. Shout out to the team, X ray productions. That's yeah, I was gonna ask you a little bit more about that. Uh, working with X Ray Productions is always a collaborative effort. You know, working with any video. Um, what was it like working there? Because it felt like the quality on this video was several levels above like the last, and that's always what it seems like for you. This is the next thing comes with uh, you know a little bit more punch, a little bit more oomph. Um, but what was it like collaborating with X Ray Productions? Were you able to get everything that you wanted, or did you have to sort of compromise a little bit? It's funny you ask because he gonna hate me for telling the story, but <laughs> dude, so I don't know how much I should share. All right, one day I was I, I had ate some shrooms one day, right? I'm with I'm with <laughs> Sam. I'm with Sam. We sitting there, it's just me and him. And I was like, you know, he is a troll of what a lot of people don't know about him. He's a fucking troll. So I'm like, Sam, don't fuck with me, bro. Like I'm tripping, you know. I'm like trying to come up with like a good idea, you know what I mean? And like he just looks at me like he has some profound idea. And I'm like, what is it? And he's like, two words, dirt bikes and suits. And I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? He's like, dirt bikes and suits. He was like, you wear a suit and have dirt bikes drive around. I was like, fuck no, bro. We're not doing that. That's a terrible idea. (laughs) And we literally thought about it for a day. Well, he was just trolling me, really, is what we were fighting about. But um, it's funny because he actually did have a dude scheduled to come out with dirt bikes and everything, even though I told him not to. Uh, Luckily, (laughs) the guy canceled on us because I would not have one to do that. But you know, it is pretty collaborative. We go back and forth a lot about like, you know, this idea, that idea. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just glad his didn't make it out that time. I <laughs> hey, that's not something we always hear on this show. We always hear, you know, usually from the artist side, it's like we had this pinnacle of this thing that we wanted to do. And I had to talk to the producer and the producer was like, well, we can only do half of that idea, you know, but uh, that's actually funny. The other way around is is a, is a trip. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about the song itself because uh, Maze Runner is sort of a, a new sound for you. I mean, obviously, Ronnie Rage, you, you you go, you know, from from rap to almost metal sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But this is you're a genre bender. That's that's what you do. You know what I mean? Um, but this is a new sound. Uh, does it ever you know, do you ever get nervous before a release like this that is too different from the last? Um, you know, the funny thing about that, like, it's new, like, I made that song a year before it dropped, like, almost an exact year um, before it came out. So, like, to me, it's all strategic. Like, we'll we'll do these songs, like, I got shit right now that probably won't see it until 2023. You know, I got stuff from 2018 that I think is going to shock the world and people going to be like, oh, my God, like, 
this is crazy, but it's like I did this shit two years ago. I, I think it's all about the timing. And I usually don't go big with a release like that unless I'm pretty confident. So I don't I don't really question the song. It's more so how am I gonna deliver it? Like, cause it's it's crazy to go in a different genre, but like you have to fully like maximize the the presentation if you know what I'm saying to give it the best yeah. chance. You know, I can't just be like off the wall doing some typical video shit with this and that. So I don't know. I like really try to dive deep into like the aesthetic and like the mood and really commit to that specific to the song versus like, oh, I'm Ronnie Rage and this is what I do, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's crazy because um when you were when you're talking with uh, in the Burbs interview, um that you were saying like when you when you dropped out of school you were like, I need to make better music. And mm -hmm. now that you're making better music, you're being actually more um, intentional about the music that you're releasing now. So it's almost like you're you're going through this uh, level of processing the music and how you can introduce it and putting it out there. Uh, how, how did how was that? How was that uh, the experience like you from that that ground level to where you are now, where you're just like, I just need to be good at just putting something out. Now I'm like. Now I know that I'm good, but I want to make sure the best is out there and it's also promoted and marketed, right? So that people right. will gravitate towards it. And yeah, you hit it right on the head, basically. Um, I just I look at this like a business. It is a business, right? So like the brand is Ronnie Rage. The product is the music. The product is the videos, the art, whatever, you know? So I'm like, okay, my product, it was okay. And then I realized it got a little bit better just off like crowd reaction, seeing more people share stuff, seeing people engage with it. Um, seeing like random people, you know, just shouting it out, you know. Um, so once I had that like confidence to like, hey man, I could really do whatever, you know. Now it's all about the the, the business side of the the marketing, the package, the package deal. Um, mm. But yeah, it's been it's been a lot, man. I work with it every day. Every day it's it's a mental thing, you know, because it's like a piece of me. It's not like just like fuck, like I just made this little you know, trinket. Now I could sell it for $50. Like, it's like, damn, like, <laughs> I sat right here and just talked to myself about my feelings for an hour. And now I'm about to share that with the world. Like, <laughs> Do you ever, um, I mean, I, I want to talk about some more specifics of, of sort of what Gabe's question was getting at a, a little later, but do you, you have an, an incredibly loyal fan base. Do you have an understanding of who those people are? Because I feel like a lot of rappers, uh, they come out and they're like, these are my 50 friends or these are my 50 super fans or whatever it may be. But I've seen so much growth from you over the past year and uh, hearing you talk about, you know, marketing in, in sort of a meticulous way. Do you have an understanding of who those fans are, what they are most gravitating to yet? Or are you still working on that? I'm still working on that because it, it confuses me sometimes, you know, like I was just <laughs> sometimes, you know, I get some hood dudes, you know, fucking with my shit. I get the girls fucking with the shit, you know, young white teenagers, suburban dudes. And it's like Russian people, Brazil. It's like it's so random. Like, I don't know what it is about me that these people like, but I'm that's you're right. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> word, word. And Gabe mentioned uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, the Burbs interview and in between that time, uh, when you did that interview with Hunter, uh, who was also a previous guest on the show, uh, and now, uh, some big life developments for you, man. You finally got your own place. Oh, hell yeah, man. Hell <laughs> what, was, what was that like for you? Because I know it was a big moment, uh, at least on Instagram. I reached out to you to say something. Um, but what was that like to you, and what's it been like since you got the keys, having the freedom to really work on your stuff, do it your way in your space? Yeah. I'm, honestly... It, Man, bro, like, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was homeless before this shit. Like, I, a lot of people don't know that. And it wasn't like I was homeless because I was poor. Like, I literally just got booted out of my crib. Like, differences with my parents and shit. Literally sleeping at the studio for, like, a month. Sleeping at random people's cribs for a couple months. And just, like, I don't even know. Just trying to figure it out. So when I finally got approved, because nobody would fucking approve me for a crib. I had the money. They were like, yeah, we can't do this. So to mm. finally get this, that was, like, a big fucking... Try, like I don't even I just felt like Victoria's just getting the shit. So now I can wake up, I control my day. I don't have to worry about my mom telling me to go cut the grass, you know, this shit. You know, I don't gotta deal with all that little shit, you know. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like my energy is protected and I just feel a lot more focused. Like hmm. I don't know how to describe it. no distractions really. Love that. The, what was there ever a sense of I, I don't I know it sounds extreme to say hopelessness, but when during that period, uh was it like I just this music thing has to go now because really this is all I got. I still feel like that. I ain't gonna lie. Like that's how I feel right now. Like I do real estate and shit. I work in real estate, but 
even still, I was just on the phone with my manager, like, bro, this shit, we got to do something, bro. You know, labels calling, like, tell them niggas, send an offer in. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm just tired of, like, the, the ground level where I feel like, I don't feel like I'm better, like, you know, at, at some higher level than anybody. But I just feel like I'm at that point now where it's like, bro, we need to take this shit up a notch for real. Like, I'm about to be 25 in two months. So... Oh, hey man, man. <laughs> as a as an old guy, twenty six, there there the best is yet to come from Ronnie Rage. I, I promise you that. I promise you that. Uh, Shigo Turbo in the chat, uh, and Yo. shout out to Shigo. Uh, she she was on the show a couple weeks back, um, and that's actually Absolutely. part of part of why I wanted to bring you on tonight because you just got off the show. I believe it was Chop Shop. Am I right? Yeah, on that? yeah, that was Shigo's show. She just she let me get a song, man. Shout out, game. Yeah. Talk about your relationship with her, and then uh, I want to talk a little bit about the stage. Okay. Fucking Shigo, bro. I've known Shigo since we were, like, what, 11 or 12 years old? I ain't going to say her government on here, but yeah, I've been knowing <laughs> Shigo like, since way back then. Before I was doing music, I didn't know she was doing music. Um, and then we kind of got, like, rekindled on the whole, like, music standpoint with the Safe House. Her and Eddie Vega had dropped a, a collab project. She said, you say the real name you do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she had, they had a, a release party and I slid and up there is, that's when I met X-Ray. That's when I met like all of the Safe House Cloud and all of them. Um, and ever since then, you know, like we just been locked in. And then I found out she lived, like we both moved towns and shit, found out she lived right down the street from me. And so we was just like, it's my twin. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's locked in. Word. What was it? Uh, what I know you mentioned that um, you tried the college thing. It didn't work out. What what about that experience kind of like informed you about making music? Shit. Honestly, it, the way that I looked at it and I'll tell you the biggest like obstacle with the school thing was like the finance part of it. I was like, bro, I'm about to pay 30 bands a year to do online homework. First of all, this shit is stupid. And then I just, I don't know. I was like, if I'm going to go in debt, if I'm going to fully dive into something like that, I might as well do it with music. I, I might as well do what I'm already good at. You know what I mean? Like versus doing some shit to make my parents happy. Like that shit didn't make sense to me. Was that a yeah. big moment of friction for you? Was it uh, pushback from the parents on, on that level? You know, the, mm. they it wasn't something that they could comprehend or understand? After the fact, they were, they were more mad. I didn't tell them. I, I just... I was like, fuck it, this, this is my <laughs> choice to make, you know, and then you're going to have to deal with it. So definitely, like, after the fact, they're like, why would you do this? And I'm just like, it was my choice to make. It's, it's my life to live. I'm going to deal with the consequences. And, you know, yeah. I mean, neither one of them went to college. So I was like, don't be hypocrites. That, don't be hypocrites. That, that's all I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my parents, man. They smart. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, what, what about like, uh, I know you mentioned that you've uh, you've worked in some odd jobs uh, while you're trying to get the get the music thing off uh, mm -hmm. UPS, McDonald's. What, what about like that? Like, you know, because even said you're saying not like you're still doing a little bit of uh, work on the side outside of music. But like, you know, when, when you're in the trenches, like trying to get your music thing off, but also like you're doing the day to day and just trying to survive. Uh, we 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 do we go through this with our trying to put this show together as well. Sort of that mental toughness you have to develop to keep plowing through to, yeah. to chase to chase your dream and your passion. But what what take us back to like that 2016, 2017 when you were like really trying to figure it out, bro? Like I was going through it, bro. And I had a girlfriend at the time too, so it was like <laughs> you feel me? Like I was I was fully invested in that shit too. So it was it was a real rough time, bro. And then it's funny because like yeah, I worked at fucking McDonald's, UPS. I worked at fucking Noodles and Company. I was washing dishes. Um, I worked in a call center. I was a telemarketer. And every day, bro, yeah, it, it, you feel me? That shit sucks. So, like, every <laughs> day, it was just like, <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I can't wait till it's my last day doing this shit. Every single time. I was like, bro, I cannot wait till I come, like, have to not come back here. And that shit drove me. Like, honestly, I was more motivated then than I am now, to be completely honest with you. Like, the discipline of, like, all right, I only got this many hours in a day to do my shit, I got to do it, you know? But now it's like, damn, I got all day to do whatever I want to do now. But I don't know, it created an urgency for me. Definitely that hunger, it'll do something to you. Mm. I noticed for myself, at least, you know, moving into my own place, it can be kind of hard to have that uh, that fire lit under you, right? Like when it when you're caught between a rock and a hard place, it's like, oh, okay, this is the time I got to do. How? What are some ways that you keep yourself from sliding into just, 
I'm gonna just chill and you know watch some TV and we just gonna post up like yeah uh, I would say my 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 whole thing is like I feel like I never stop working so it's like I'll reward myself with free time by doing work if that makes sense so like when yeah. I first wake up I get ready I make my bed and then I come out I'm like all right I'm gonna make a beat. That way, if I want to slack off for a couple hours, I'm like, damn, well, at least I made a beat today. I don't know. It's like a mind <laughs> trick, you know. It's kind of Bias. shitty, but you know, I, I try to I try to get a little bit of work in, like in between, in between. I don't try to overwork, but I don't try to be too lazy either. But you know, it's it's something that I feel like everybody got to work on. Like it, it, it's it's hard. We human at the end of the day, but I don't know. I will be trying to yeah, piss my neighbors off too. So like, if I'm trying to piss my neighbors <laughs> off. I'm gonna turn the music all the way up. We gonna go some 808s crazy today. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, um, you know, that I think is part of the Ronnie Rage brand. I mean, it's it's Ronnie Rage. It's not Ronnie Chill and let's be let's be easy. You all know, right. uh, Ronnie last time I saw you perform live, my friend, uh, uh, you yeah. quite legitimately shut down the entire venue. The venue <laughs> in which I saw you perform live, the cops showed up after your set. Uh, and that venue is no longer a place of business, closed by the city of Chicago. All right. Um, so, so my question to you is: is this? What does it feel like from Ronnie Rage's perspective on stage? We've had a lot of artists on the show. They all say something different. It depends on you know the the venue, the lights, or whatever. Uh, but what does it feel like for you with a mic on your hand? Are you seeing individual people's faces? Is the whole crowd just black to you? Like. Uh, you know, where's your, where's your head at? Bro, honestly, a, a mix of both. Like, I see the figures, but I don't even... Nigga, when I say, like, I literally black out every single time, every single... If it's, like, a high energy, I black out, for real. Because it's, like, I don't... It's adrenaline. Like, I just want to head, but whoever's in front of me, literally, like... <laughs> I don't know. You know what's funny? All right, so when I was in high school, I was on a football team. I was the one that did the pregame chants and you know all of that shit you know so that's exactly how i feel when i get on stage it's like you know duh, like that type of shit like that's exactly how i feel and then you go and you play and that's how i feel word word and, and i would just like to say for anybody watching out there it is not safe in the mosh pit <laughs> of a ronnie rage show you may get head butted in the face that is that is not hyperbole that hey, is that you is hung in there bro is. you was in there so i think i think they might be able to hey this man hey I ain't gonna lie, I do remember at the end, you was right there with me. He was right there with me. I wasn't gonna miss that last song. I wasn't gonna miss that last song. That's for sure. That's Man. for sure. But listen, I, I'm a little bit older than both of you, and I am not jumping in no damn mosh pit. Uh when you get <laughs> when you get injured when you're older, that shit hurts. So I, I can't I can't afford to be injured. Uh, I won't even go in the mosh pit if it's not my show. I swear to God, like I'll be at the show, like, man, and these young motherfuckers out here jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> if it's my show, it's different. You got to come. That's so mind. interesting. You really be in the back, you know, just bro, like chilling? When I was a shorty, I was into that. But like, bro, I went to Summer Smash and I just remember just all these. What? Sweaty. All right. Let me let me pose this to you. What if it's she go, though? Oh, yeah. Different. Different. OK. okay. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the performance. I, I feel like I'm performing with her. I have to extend that to the crowd. You know what I mean? Word. 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 <laughs> what, what, uh, what position did you play in high school on your football team? I played running back, slot, and cornerback. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah this is Renaissance man. Gabe was just telling me a, a great story of how Gabe got cracked playing quarterback in high school football. Um, four, four days man. on the high school football team, and I was like, "I'm done. <laughs> I'm good. Like this ain't this ain't the move." That's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "If the if the if you if you uh, fumble the snap, jump on it," and I I decided to outrun the football team, and that didn't work. Oh, so I, shit. yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you gotta be ready gang them niggas hit hard in high school bro i ain't like it was just i was like you know what i don't think this is for me man i'm gonna just enjoy the rest of my summer instead of being out here with y'all during a summer practice fuck all this 95 degrees outside that, that's the man. that's the yeah exactly um what i wanted to give it to um you have like sort of an interesting way do you still do this where you list the songs as numbers before you give them titles is that something you still do Oh yeah, I just made 786 today. <laughs> How do you keep that straight in your brain? You know, like, is it is it just a big old list of numbers? Like, you know, like 857 sound good, you know? I swear, to God. I swear to God. And then when I reference it to other people, like I'll be like my manager, I'll be like, yo, you heard 652, bro. Yeah, I think we might drop that one. He'd be all right, like 
Let me go listen to it now. And feel like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like a placeholder in my brain. Like I know by association. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking uh, Maze Runner was 584, 582, 584. One of those. Damn. Is it? Is it? Is it numbered like? Is it chronologically numbered like? Is you know once you're done making 582, you make a 583, or is mm-hmm. it like? Okay. Just okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see you. I like see a Dewey, you. like a Dewey decimal. <laughs> the Ronnie Decimal System. Everybody get on that. Um, I, I, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but it, it is a big part uh, of you that you are self-produced. But it's not, you, you're not, um, I don't know what the best way to put it is. You, you, you will still take a producer's beat. You know, yeah. you will still uh, work on a song or nothing. It's yeah. not like, uh, no, this is my space. You know what I right, mean? But, yeah. but you do hold your own. Um, so, so talk about what it takes for, for you to hear somebody else's beat and then be really excited to work on that one. Shit. Honestly, the composition is everything. Sound selection is a big one. That's one that I run into a lot. Like I'll hear the start of a beat and I'm like, damn, this shit is fire. And then they come in and the 808 sound like, like, what the fuck is that? You know, like, I don't know. So sound selection is everything. Melody is important. Um, energy, um, the verse can't be too long. You know, it's just certain shit like that. Like, it just has to feel right. But right. I could, like, free verse it, too, to match the beat. But it, it just got to it gotta be right. I don't even know how to describe it. You you know when you hear it, though. Word, word. Uh, I got a couple quick questions to ask, or I'm going to let Gabe get one off after this. But uh, Chop Shop is one of my favorite venues in the city. So to see you get up on stage there uh, was tight. Is there a venue, uh, a festival a show that would be top notch for you that like, you know, you would love to, to perform, be that, you know, Coachella, uh, or, you know, damn near Chicago symphony orchestra. I like, I don't know. Like, is there, is there a spot somewhere where you would be like, damn, this is nice. I definitely like coach. You said Coachella, bro. I can't wait till I'm at that point where I could, because you know, Coachella not going to just let you come up to the stage with an MP3 track. Like, you know, you got to (laughs) have, You gotta have a full shit. You come to Coachella, and I think that's like the standard of like festivals to me. Honestly, everybody trying to knock Coachella out. So, it's Coachella, Lollapalooza, obviously Chicago. Um, venue wise, shit. Um, what's what's the name of that one? Um, it started with C. It's on the tip of my tongue. Concord. Concord. Concord Music Hall. Yeah, that's I love every every show I go there. I'm like, yeah, this sounds so damn good. I can't wait to perform that. Word. Word. Go ahead, Gay. Uh, really quick, we got a few more minutes. Uh, what was the? I know you did the YouTube University to learn a lot of your skills uh, <laughs> with the producing engineering. Yeah. Uh, what 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 was the the biggest takeaway from that experience? Simplicity is key. Simplicity. Mm. Minimize everything. Like you don't have to have ten sounds. Like a lot of my shit be like ten ten sounds. You know, and that's six of them is percussion. You know. Yeah. Word, word. And then uh, last question here before before we got to transition and let you go. Uh, you talked about uh, the girlfriend uh, fueling a little bit of the, the Maze Runner track. And we like to ask something a little out of left field here on Weekend at Gabe's. <laughs> what is Ronnie Rage's best go-to tips for breaking up with your girl? Hmm. Shit. The best go-to tip. See, I'm bad at this, bro, because I'm like... <laughs> but that's why I'm asking you, because the best coaches are bad at playing the game. You see Ty Lu out here coaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So I guess for me personally, a clean break is... That's the only way to do it. Like, you can't, like, phase out of it. That's only destructing you, destructing the other person. I've been called selfish in breakups, but for me personally... I have to just stop fucking with you. Like the day I decide I can't be with you, I gotta think about it for a few days. And if I think that again in those few days, I, like I'm gonna just let you know, like I'm not feeling this. I love you, but I, I have to focus on work. Ronnie, <laughs> you, you heard it here first, America. Make it a clean break. <laughs> clean stop break. messing around. It's cuffing season. Break you up know. with your summer fling. Keep them scissors sharp. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I always want to role play with Ronnie. Like, I want you to break up with me. Like, what, what would you? What, what would you say, R- Ronnie? It's not working out. Like, what? 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 What, what do you say to that, Ronnie? Break up with me. Hey man, look, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. That shit you've been doing was kind of fool as fuck. I, I can't really fuck with that. So I'm gonna just let you know, like, I rock with you, but 
I think we just got to focus on ourselves, you know? You know, you, you got a lot first. of potential. You got a lot of potential, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but not with me. <laughs> what, some, feel- some might say that your potential level, Gabe, is phenomenal. <laughs> you know, some, might, some might say that. Superstar level. It, it, it definitely sounds like it's not you, it's me. Uh, so it's all good. <laughs> right. Roddy, thank you so much for giving us your time here on Weekend at Games. Let's hit the air horn, Sam. You know what it is. The, the new single, Beige Runners, on all digital streaming platforms. Go support local Chicago independent music. It's the thing to do. It's also good for the soul. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. I hope to have you back soon. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate y'all. All right, Roddy Ray, joining Incredible. us here on Weekend at Games. That was Incredible. so damn fun. Man, um... What a, what a guy, and so much more to come from him. So um, I think, you know, uh, with, with Ronnie, I'm going to leave it right there, man. Uh, stay tuned with Ronnie Rage. There's going to be a lot more coming. And uh, if you get out of the show, watch out for that mosh pit because you will get hit in the face. I, I don't know what's more scarier, him or Junebug. I, I'm not sure which one <laughs> I need to stay away. Which one do I need to stand in the back for? That's a good question. That's a good question. they both pretty dangerous people. Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe. Thanks for checking out this latest episode of Weekend at Gabe's. Click on any of the links swirling around my head and also hit the subscribe button while you're here. Thanks for checking out us here on YouTube.